Hello everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger at dansfish.com, where we're on a mission to humanely source, maintain, and transport aquarium fish to our customers. I have some really cool fish to show you today, including one I've never seen before. Let's start with that one. All right, so here they are. These are pineapple sword tails, but with a veil tail. And these are female. It took us a little while to figure that out, but these are all females. That elongated anal fin looked to me a bit like a gonopodium. And so I thought these might all be males. But I talked to my supplier and they said that apparently only the females develop that veil tail. I'll show you what the males look like in just a second. But I think that's stunning. That looks like something out of Fantasia, that animated Disney movie. I've never seen a sore tail that looks like that. Look at that finage. That's just crazy. I, I don't know if I'm a big fan or not, but I can't deny the beauty. Like, and, and by the way, I don't think it's cruel. Like, just if you observe these, they're down there eating a uh, extreme scratcher pellet, the kind of veggie pellet from Extreme Aquatics Foods. Uh, you can find that and the other foods we're feeding today at our Amazon link down in the description below. Some fish get such long fins that it's almost cruel, like they can't swim. It's like they, they almost can't function properly. I don't get that with these. These seem to swim well. They are acting what I would consider normal for a sword tail, bickering a little bit among themselves and all that. But they, uh, they have those beautiful fins. So that's kind of where I draw the line. I'm like, is this such a, like, for example, a rose tail betta? That's a little too much finage. Those, those fish can't even really swim properly. This though, that's a lot of finage, but they seem to be getting around just fine. So I'm okay with it. So anyway, really neat looking fish. First time I've ever seen these. First time I've ever had these veil tail, pineapple sword tails. And apparently only the females get that veil tail. Let me show you the males. Okay, so here are the males. These are the pineapple veil tail sword tails. Oh, albinos, by the way. I forgot to mention that. And uh, according to my supplier, this is what the males look like. They do not express the veil feature. Something about the genes and how they're yeah, maybe, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, they're very beautiful too. That nice high fin. They're acting totally normal. Everyone's acting healthy and good, which is great because albinos have a reputation. So I'm glad that these are doing well. And they seem to eat everything we feed them. No problems with this batch so far at all. So there you go. Albino, veil tail, pineapple sword tail males to go with those females I showed you earlier. All right, so here is a group of female albino pineapple hyphen sword tails, not the veil tails, or not the veils, just the, just the high fins. So these are a little different, still pretty in their own way, but they don't have that long, really long tail fin. These are doing well also, no, no issues with these ladies, eating everything, acting like a sword tail should. And I'm really happy about that because, you know, albinos have a reputation for being difficult, but so far, these have not proven any more difficult for us than any other normal sword tail. They, the breeder does, I think, a good job keeping them healthy and hardy. So I think they'll do well for you. First try, though. So, you know, let us know if anything happens. We'll take care of you. All right, let's look at the boys that go with these. All right, here is a group of boys to go with those ladies I just showed you. These are males of the albino pineapple hyphen sword tails. Nice solid batch. No issues with these. Eating everything, acting healthy in every way. So... I'm pretty sure they're gonna do well with you. First try with this strain though, I've never shipped these before. So, you know, let me know if something goes wrong, but I don't think so. All signs indicate these are gonna be absolutely healthy and good, even though they're albinos, I think they're gonna do well for you. Size on these without the sword, just the body, I'm gonna say about two inches, if you count the tip of the nose to tip of the tail, not including the sword. And that dorsal fin is really tall. Like they have a nice tall dorsal for sure. All right, here's another live bear that I think is stunning. These are the high fin sunrise platies. So these are platies, but look at the line. Like these have been bred with tender loving care. A lot of effort's gone into this. The line appears to be very stable and fixed. They seem to be robust and I love that tall fin on those males. The females have it too, but it's even more pronounced on the males. So I think we're gonna have several trios to be able to offer. Look at them go though. Like how bright is that? That's just happiness in an aquarium, that bright yellow and orange color. Yeah, you can't look at that and be sad. That is a happy color. There was a female that looked like she was going to drop babies. It doesn't look like she's dropped them yet. So who knows? Pretty soon here, maybe it'll be a proud papa. 
hyphen sunrise platys. All right, here's a neat little guppy. In a world of long finned, long tailed guppies, these really stand out. They're um, the neon lyre tail guppy, is the kind they are. Kind of back to nature guppy, I guess you could say, but obviously been bred for some color and for those nice lyre tail extensions on the males. So if you like guppies and want something a little different than your average, you know, large, long-tailed, fantail type guppy, here you go. They're doing fantastic for us. All right, here's one that everyone likes, but isn't always easy to find. You won't see this in a pet store usually. This is a Mecca Splendens, the butterfly gadaid or butterfly split fin. The males get a really nice bright yellow stripe across the end of their tail. And this is a decent sized fish. I would say an adult female can reach, oh, three inches or so, something like that. Nice, healthy, healthy group. These are hobbyists bred and raised right here in the US of A. A Mecca Splendence, awesome group. Now, I, I did not feed these Hikari uh, Massive or Delight pellets. I feed these the extreme algae wafers because they need a lot of vegetable matter in their diet. I will give them a, a Hikari wafer every now and then. I'll give them some protein every now and then. But you don't want to give them too much protein too often. You want to give them a lot of veggies. Uh, frozen brine shrimp is good too. I know that's protein, but it has so much fiber in it, uh, so much keratin in it that it acts as fiber. And so that's a pretty safe, heavy, you know, heavier protein diet if you want to do that. But I give them a mix, a lot of veggie stuff with, you know, every other day we'll give them more protein, but veggies are important for these guys. Okay, here's a nice batch of Hillstream loaches, but they're not the usual one that you see. They're not the Sewellia lineolata. These are the Borneo Hillstream loaches. I think Meyer's eye is the species, although with all these hill streams, you have to be kind of careful. It's, it's kind of like plecos back in the day when they were discovering all these new kinds of plecos and they had to revert to L numbers because there was so much misidentification. It's kind of like that with hill stream loaches. But whatever they are, they're really cool looking with those spots all over the body, bright gold spots on the body. They're fat and sassy. They're doing well. And, uh, they're a really cool addition to an aquarium. They remind me of miniature stingrays. Some people describe them as miniature UFOs, kind of hover, you know, as they hover around looking for food. Um, such a unique fish. And I've got a couple more to show you. So let's go take a look. This is the one we all know and love. This is Sewellia lineolata. Absolutely gorgeous. Sometimes called the butterfly. Has this re or reticulated hillstream loach has this really neat bold pattern on it. And while they're on the glass, let's just look at their bellies. Like these are nice, fat, and sassy fish. They came in great shape. They're doing fantastic. I don't think we've had a single loss in this batch. This is the, the best batch, I want to say, of this fish, maybe of any hillstream loach we've ever got. These are good size. Smallest one is probably two and a half inches. Biggest ones are maybe pushing three inches. Like these came in big, good body weight, and they're doing very well for us. Sewellia lineolata, reticulated hillstream loach, or butterfly hillstream loach, or, you know, pick a common name, <laughs> or whatever you call them. They're probably the most popular hillstream loach, and it's for the reason that they're just so, that, that contrast in the pattern is so bold, and they're just so pretty. These are what are commonly called squeaker cats, the Cynodonis genus because when you take them out of the water, they make a squeaky noise. This is Cynodonis uh, negrita, sometimes called the false upside-down catfish. Um, we all know the upside-down catfish. It's been beloved in the aquarium hobby for a long, long time. These are kind of another flavor of that. They're mostly nocturnal fish, but they'll definitely come out in big groups at feeding time. Now, here's a Corydora you don't see every day. This is Corydora's napoensis. It uh, is in the Elegans complex, so it looks very similar to Corridor's Elegans. This batch, I think, is doing well. Look at the kind of color and pattern on those guys, that spotting and striping. They really are a great-looking fish. They're eating really well. That pellet that you saw for a minute before they pushed it up against the uh, trim so much that you couldn't see it anymore, that pellet they're chewing on is a Hikari Massivore Delight pellet. I, I like that food because it stays water stable for a long time. So I can put a few of those in there and these guys can kind of graze on it for a couple hours, which they like to do. Corridors, you know, they need some time with their food. They eat little bits all day long in nature. They're not a fish that eats one big meal and is done. They're not a barracuda. So that's how we do that. I've got a second tank of these to show you as well. Let me show you that one. 
Okay, this is the second aquarium of Corydoras napoensis we have. And in fact, I, I cleaned the glass on this one the other day, so it's actually nice and clean, so you can see them well. Good for me. Something that you can see in this tank better than the other, I think, is that gold iridescent spot they have on the top of their head. As they turn and face us, maybe the camera will pick it up. It's this kind of bright gold iridescent spot. Looks really cool, highly reflective, and uh, something you don't see on all the quarries. So kind of a unique little feature of these guys. Anyway, this batch is doing fantastic. I don't think we've had a single loss in this aquarium. So if you're looking for Corydoras napoensis, uh, a bit of an unusual quarry you don't see every day, I think we can hook you up. I'm talking to you, Bob Steenfot. <laughs> While we're talking about Corydoras, we might as well show you this beauty. This is the orange Venezuelan quarry, Corydoras venezuelanus. They have like an iridescent bluish greenish kind of sheen to the, the face and that patch in the middle of the body. And then up on the head and back behind that patch, you have an orange color. Now the amount of orange can vary with individuals and it can vary over time. Some kind of darken out as they age, but even then they're still a really pretty fish. Um, the orange Venezuelan quarry, one of the prettier quarries for sure. And look at them go. I mean, they're healthy, they're happy, they're acting normal in every way, which with quarries means they're acting very cute, <laughs> clowning around in big groups. Um, all quarries that are not in lineage one, there are nine different kind of groups of quarries. If it's not in lineage one, it probably needs to be with a big group. The bigger, the better. These are very social fish. All the quarries that we carry are very social fish, and they're going to want to be with big groups of members of their same species. That's how they feel secure. That's how they exist in the wild. So the more you can get, the merrier. This one here, beautiful little little catfish, Aspidor spilotus, doing fantastic. Like a quarry in that they're peaceful and they like to be in groups and all that. The main difference I can see as a hobbyist is their activity level. These are fast swimmers. They come from really rapid flowing rivers. So they appreciate some flow and they zip around. Look at them go in a big cloud all over that Hikari Massive or Delight pellet. Hey, anyways, if you want something like a quarry but different, I, I would highly recommend these. Some of the easiest catfish I've ever kept and definitely the easiest quarry type fish I've ever bred. Even easier than Corydoras Aeneas. These guys breed all the time. We joke that they're a hippie commune because they are always making love and not war. All right, I think this is I think this is a really fun tank. I like how that Anubius barteri nana golden, how bright it is in there. Nice plant. On top of some Aspidorus Raymundi. Again, hardy, peaceful, super easy to breed, just like just like a Corydora, but more active and even easier to breed. And on top of them are Melanotania praecox, the uh, Neon Dwarf Rainbow. And these are Praycox that we bred and raised right here at Dan's Fish. Um, had a bunch of eggs and decided why not and let the babies grow up. So we've got those available as well. And look at this betta. This is a Koi Galaxy betta. Uh, on the Koi's kind of strains of bettas, each one is very different. They come in all kinds of variety. I think this one's particularly handsome with all the small blotches, his blues and his reds. I like the white, white tip on the ventral fins. But the star of this tank for me, is these Aspidorus Raymundi. I just love the activity and kind of the, the bundle of joy as they clown around. Neon Dwarf Rainbows, they're young, they're small, but you can already see the blue coming in on the males with the nice red on the tip of the fins, the anal fin, the dorsal fins, and, and some red on the caudal fin, the tail fin as well. Hard to go wrong with the Neon Dwarf Rainbow. Don't get too big, have all the personality of a rainbow fish, and are very pleasingly colored. And the price point on Neon Dwarf Rainbows is very reasonable as well compared to most rainbow fish. These are the Pseudomugil Luminatus, the uh, neon red blue eye, they're sometimes called, because they're beautiful. They have amazing red coloration on them when they settle in and color up. Only have these for about a week, so they're not fully there yet, but they're fat and they're sassy and they're doing well for us. I'm not going to spend too much time here because I've shown you Pseudomugil Luminatus many, many times, but just for anyone who wants to see what the current batch looks like that's available for sale, I think it's useful to get a glimpse so you can make an informed decision and know what you're getting. So this is another fish where we found the right supplier, the right breeder, and uh, they come in really fat and sassy for us and they're doing well. By the way, someone asked the other day how the fish that used to be um, behind me in the live streams and the 125 are doing. They're in here and this is how they're doing. These are uh, 
Electric Blue Acara, and they're breeding for us. And we've we've got hundreds and hundreds of babies from these guys. We don't always get enough. We sell these pretty fast, so sometimes we do have to buy from other suppliers, but often we're able to breed enough to supply. So that's kind of cool. So they just keep going, keep breeding. Speaking of electric blue acara, here are some, but that's not the fish I want to show you in here. What I want to show you is all these tetras swimming around them. These are wild African tetras from the Congo, but we don't know what kind. The bag came in unlabeled. There's kind of an assortment of them in there. Um, some of them look a little like Fantastique. Some of them look like Lucchini Reds, but since the bag was not labeled, and we are not expert enough to really identify them, um, we're just selling them as assorted mystery African tetras. They're a good deal. Normally, fish like this go for forty to sixty bucks, depending on the species. Uh, those they're very expensive. Those different types of uh, Phenacogrammus and is it a Alesto petersi or something like that? But since we don't know what they are they're much cheaper. So uh, if you don't mind doing the work to identify them yourself, or if you don't care what they are, you just want pretty African tetras, um, this will be a deal for you. But yeah, we've tried and tried and we cannot get a uh, ID on them that we're comfortable with. So instead of selling you something under a false name, we're just discounting them, being honest and saying, we don't know what they are, but if you want them, you can get them for cheap. <laughs> I mean, relatively cheap. They're still expensive, but much cheaper than normal. Anyway, I just thought that would be cool to show you, so if you've been wondering what those look like, you can actually see the actual fish you'd be getting. All right, here's our current group of Congo Tetras. They're doing good. These are all males. So if you want the color and the big long filaments on the fins that will develop with age and all that, this is the group for you. Look at them go for that. I love it when they play rugby. Playing rugby with the food. <laughs> I mean, these are right now, I would say these are about an inch, inch and a quarter in size. They're young males, but you can see that they are males. They have the white uh, kind of little thin glowing margin on their fins. And they're starting, just starting to develop that trident on the tail that they're so famous for. These are large. These fish grow three inches, maybe a little bigger when they're full grown. So these are just little guys. You know, if they were humans, they'd be, you know, 12 years old, just starting to sprout up a little bit. They're doing fantastic. and. And then a couple months, they're going to be big and have their full color, their full finish, nice iridescent blue with really impressive fins. Congo tetras. Males. Rugby's so fun to watch. All right, this is our current horde of cardinal tetras. I'm proud to be the place you can get cardinal tetras that will thrive for you. We have sold thousands of these. We know the supply chain. We know where the good, strong cardinal tetras come from. And those are the only suppliers we do business with. These are going to thrive for you. They have good body weight. They're hardy. They're healthy. They're eating really well. So if you've had trouble with cardinal tetras in the past, uh, one of the things we're really proud of is we are a place that people who've had trouble in the past can buy them and finally have success because of where we source them and how we treat them. So that's one of our claims to fame. We're really proud of that. If this is a fish that scared you off because you've had trouble with it in the past, I would encourage you to give them a whirl. I'm pretty sure ours are going to thrive for you, and I will guarantee that 100%. If they don't, we'll refund the, the cost of the fish and the cost of the shipping associated with the fish, because I know they're going to do well for you. <laughs> That's a sight to behold, isn't it? I mean, just look how bright that is. If this fish was not so commonly available, I swear it would be one of the most sought-after, expensive, like, bucket list fish out there. But we don't appreciate it enough just because it's fairly common. But what's not common is healthy ones. So here you go. So one of the most magical parts of doing this for a living is even after about 30 years, give or take, of doing this, every now and then I see something new. In fact, frequently, I would say weekly, I see something I've never seen before. Those veil tail sword tails, never seen that before. An albino hyphen pineapple sword tail of good quality, never seen that before. And those, those platies, those are amazing as well. So, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to find some live bears that are new to me. I'm kind of getting my interest peaked in those again. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that as well. Thanks for joining us on this tour. Please stay in your seat with your arms and legs inside the vehicle until it comes to complete stop, which is going to happen in four, three, two.
Hey everyone, it's Dan. If you want to learn more about Aquarium Fish, we do a live stream every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Dan's Fish YouTube channel. If you're in the market for Aquarium Fish, check us out at dancefish.com. We ship to the U.S. and parts of Canada. And if you want something fishy to wear, we've got merch. Till next time, have a good one. Bye-bye.